I used to be Talia Lancaster. I don't know if anyone remembers me from 2019. I'm now Talia McEwen. I just got married in December, so I'm still getting used to it. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I am a professional doodler, as well as a scrum master and an agilist. So I actually get paid to take visual notes of events um, and to do graphics for people. So I still can't believe that it's a profession, but I love it. And I'm here today to share some of that with you. So this is the start of your sketching um, journey. Um, I'm from South Africa. I live in Cape Town. I can see the ocean from my house, which is amazing. So I'm very happy to be here with you in person again this year. Okay, so how many of you doodle? Okay, cool. Um, so doodling, I remember at school I used to always kind of doodle and teachers used to say like, stop messing around, stop doodling, you know, pay attention. Actually, if you doodle, you are 29% more likely to retain the information, even if those pictures aren't necessarily related to the context. So it's really interesting how we taught to not value pictures and to not value kind of drawing and doodling, but it's actually a superpower that we can tap into different modes of learning. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So what is sketchnoting? Okay, let's hope my tech works, please, everyone. The demo gods. Okay, so sketchnoting, I suppose it's in the name. So in a, in a very basic way, it's using words and pictures. So what we're saying is not that words aren't important, but we're saying that if you add visuals, it can actually enhance that message. It can help you communicate better, and it can help you retain information better. So sketchnoting basically is a summary using both words and pictures or images. And it's, it's become quite popular. I don't know if you've seen online, like it's become quite a, quite a trend. So um, it's awesome to see that people are actually tapping into this different way of learning. Um, and the thing is with visuals is that there are a lot of benefits to them. So again, we kind of taught the older we get, um, you shouldn't doodle, you shouldn't draw, you should only draw if you're an artist. Um, but actually it adds to our communication. So using visuals can actually help with memory retention. So they did a study where they gave people information and they added visuals to it. And 65% of people could remember that information three days later, as opposed to 10% of people who had no visuals. Okay, so there are a lot of studies that show the benefit of it. It can help increase understanding by up to 400%. Um, I know in India, who was saying how many official languages or how many languages do you have in uh, India? Yeah, Lots, 100 plus. 100 plus. Yeah, I can't even imagine. So in South Africa, we have 11 official languages. And I think we underestimate the fact that English is maybe not everyone's first language. However, pictures are more universal. If you're traveling, you see signs, you see street signs, a lot of that is translatable across languages. So it's really important to kind of use images as well to enhance uh, understanding. Uh, it also helps with creativity. It helps you think differently. You'll see now some of the techniques that we're going to use. You're forced to create links and to contain things and group things and summarize things. And that's a very different way of, of processing information to just using text. Um, it helps with engagement as well. Um, so we're talking about sketch noting. So you'll find if you're taking notes while someone's talking, you're way more engaged and you're kind of paying attention to that information. Better communication. And then also motivation, especially in learning. So 98% of people who did e-learning say that they were more motivated to learn if they were visuals. So, I mean, can you imagine someone just giving you a whole bunch of text I don't think anyone would be motivated to learn. Um, 
speaking of which, that summary that you've just seen, the text version is that. So what we're doing today is kind of taking information and finding creative, uh, more effective ways of presenting it. Okay, and then why should you sketch notes? So if you are sketch noting, you are actually using kinesthetic learning as well. So you've got visual learning, read write, and at school a lot of our learning is actually read write. We're not encouraged to focus on pictures. Um, and then you've got auditory, which is listening, and then kinesthetic, which is moving. So if you sketch noting, especially, and I would encourage a lot of you after the session to take notes during the conference, you're activating all four modes of learning. So it can really help you retain the information better, and it helps you kind of focus on what's happening. Okay, so. What we're going to focus on today, so there are lots of different types of visual thinking. Um, so what we're going to focus on today is sketching for me, which is kind of here, personal sketch noting. Where that's really useful is if you're studying, so say you've got a whole bunch of information that you need to summarize and remember, um, you can kind of do it for fun. Um, so that is not live. So you can take information and take your time to do it. Uh, you could also do personal sketch noting live. So as I'm talking or as someone's talking, you can do it real time, um, which is a bit harder. Group workshops, so if anyone's gonna be around on Saturday, uh, we have a poster making workshop on Saturday, and this is very much in this space. So that's big visuals, to collaborate with people and teams. Um, and then performance sketch noting. So this is kind of the space that I play in. It's very, very stressful. So this is kind of live sketching for people. So on a scale of kind of easy to hard, we're gonna be starting here today, which is personal sketch noting, getting you comfortable and confident to draw um, and kind of learning those skills and then you can decide to kind of progress if, if uh, you enjoy it. Okay, and the process is simple. So we're gonna take either written information um, or, yeah, let's say written for this. You can also kind of listen to information. Then there's a process in between where you have to interpret. You can't draw and write everything. You have to pick out the key points you have to find linkages between things. Um, you have to separate or connect ideas, um, and then you sketch notes. So it's very, very kind of simple process, um, but it can be quite daunting when you first start. Okay, and then the other important point is that sketch noting is not art. Okay, so I love art but it's got a completely different application to what we're doing today. The more imperfect your sketches, the better, because it makes it memorable. And what we're doing is we're representing things. It's not gonna be a super realistic um, picture of something. It's gonna be very much about representing something. So sketch noting is actually more about thinking then about giving a very realistic representation of something. So we want to get quick, confident, and be able to draw and represent things quickly. Okay, so don't worry, we're not here to create a Mona Lisa. In fact, people who are fine artists find this really difficult because you almost have to unlearn everything you've been taught with fine art. This is very much just about keeping it simple. Okay, and then, where do I start? So, I think with sketch noting, a lot of people think, ah, oh, you just do whatever. And you can, and I would encourage you to play around. But there is actually a set kind of formula to it. Um, and that's what we're gonna do today. So, I'm gonna take it piece by piece with you, and then we're gonna put it all together. And you're gonna have an opportunity to create your own sketch note today. It's a safe space, so if you're gonna do it, here's a place to try. Um, 
So think of it like building a house. Each step we do is kind of in order. Um, so we're gonna start with layout. That's about kind of space planning, figuring out where you wanna go uh, with your sketch note. Then we're gonna talk about text. We're gonna talk about visual cues, which is kind of bullets, lines, arrows, numbering, uh, pictures and people, frames, and then lastly, shadows and color. So that's in order. A lot of people could just do layout, text, visual cues, some pictures, and that's fine. You don't have to add a whole bunch of color and shading. So kind of this is the process in order, um, and then if you have time or you want, you can add a whole bunch of color and shading uh, to, make it look, to make it look colorful. Okay, does everyone have a little booklet? Okay, cool, so there should be booklets on your table. Um, there's plenty of space to take notes. I would encourage it. Um, and you can kind of follow along. It's not all in the booklet, so I'm gonna be adding some extra stuff that you can uh, take notes on. Okay, so firstly is layout. So we want to start with a plan in mind. And there are a whole bunch of uh, different layouts that you can use. This one, uh, the first one I really like, so you would have a title at the top, and then you would put kind of text pictures, you'd work your way down almost in columns, and then go back up to the top, and you kind of create like these three columns on your page. Uh, the other one, you can just follow kind of like a, a flowing route through your page. Uh, that can be quite cool if you're sketch noting and you want to use a metaphor of like a journey or a, you know, traveling. Uh, it's more kind of organic flowing along the page. This one is called popcorn style. So you could do a title in the middle or at the top, and then you would just put chunks of information anywhere that you have a gap. So there's no kind of real order to it. Um, this one, which I like a lot as well, is like a radial or like a mandala um, or like a clock. So you would actually start and I go clockwise. So I go one, two, three, four, and I go in order kind of around the circle. Uh, and then there's some other ideas. You can obviously just kind of go across the page. Um, Another one which is quite nice is like a modular, so you could put the title in the middle, um, and then you can actually just divide your page up depending on your different chunks of information. Some might be smaller. You can kind of divide it up and actually draw the lines to kind of separate your page. Okay. So an important thing also is to kind of keep, keep some space, because remember you're gonna start with text, and you're gonna build on. So you don't want everything to be full. You wanna make sure that you're planning and you have enough space. Very difficult to do when you do it live because you don't always know what's gonna happen. Um, and you can also do landscape. So if you want, sometimes the information is kind of more maybe like a list. You could do something like that and you can just kind of contain each chunk. Some may be smaller, some may be bigger. So you can kind of just do a straight down kind of list. Um, yeah. Okay, so when you see kind of infographics or sketch notes, think about how they've laid it out. Because there are plenty of kind of ideas out there in terms of how you could do different layouts. Okay, easy. There is a space there on page two of your book if you want to um, invent your own. Uh, so you're welcome to, to put a different layout in there. Okay, cool. The next thing is text. So you're probably thinking, why am I talking to you about writing? Because everyone's been writing since they were kids. Okay, but there is a kind of process to this in terms of how you would do um, your text in a sketch note. So essentially, 
you want to make sure when you start, you're going to start with a title. Um, and your title can kind of be big and bold. I would suggest you also summarize. And this is where that interpretation comes. Think of something fun and short um, for your title. So that's the first thing that you're going to do. Then you're going to add your subtitles. Um, and I suppose we kind of used to it with Word and PowerPoint. Uh, you have kind of uh, different hierarchies of text. So you're going to add kind of your subtitles next. Any other main points? And then if you have kind of little bits to add. So your text kind of goes first. Bearing in mind you want to summarize, you want to keep it short, you want to find ways to kind of represent things where you're not just re rewriting a whole big paragraph. Okay, so that's kind of the order of it. And then you can have fun with typography. So think of the topic, think of if there's a fun way you could tie the topic into your font. Um, but just bear in mind if you have 10 different types of fonts, it's going to get very busy, and we're still going to add pictures and color and, and borders and, and all of that. So I would suggest for your sketch notes, come up with a, a bold, fun font for your title and subtitles, and then just use your normal handwriting for the rest. So I would suggest limiting to kind of two or three styles um, per, per sketch note. Okay, and you'd be surprised how much we already can do with what we know. So, for example, just doing all caps, um, you know, that's kind of a style in itself. It is quite nice for headings because then you're not going to have things kind of hanging. Sometimes you have letters that, have, that are long or short, so it can get hard. So, uh, all caps are really good for headings. Um, and then if you want to make that special, you want to make like a serif, font, you can just add little lines to the edge, which is a really quick, easy way to make like a Times New Roman serif font. Another cool one is, and I do this quite often as a style, is just to use all small case and not capitalize. Or you can kind of mix, you can have small, capital, capital, small, you know, so if you're doing that as a style, you can mix fonts. Um, bubble letters are also super cool. I would suggest doing in pencil first uh, your, your writing and then just go around it in pen or marker. So that's a really easy way to do bubble letters. And you can actually have fun with it. You can do very thick. You can do very thin. And the nice thing with this is that it gives you space to also color in. So it kind of creates a whole different style. And you could do kind of rounded versus, versus square. So already you see how much you can actually do just with typography, and there are people who actually only do typography. It's so big, you can do so much. Um, another one which we're not going to spend like three days learning proper calligraphy, because uh, that's a whole different ball game, but I can teach you kind of a trick if you want to make it look like calligraphy for your headings. Um, so what I do is I kind of do either like a cursive or like a scribbly font. So I don't know if you guys at school had to do cursive. Yeah, okay, cool. So that's also one we all know. So you're going to do that as your heading. And then the trick here is that we don't need fancy calligraphy brushes and all of that. All you do is you go back and then on every downstroke, so where your brush would be uh, going down, you just make it thicker. So I would go up here, here it's going down, so I'm going to make that line thicker. Okay. I'm going down here, so I'm going to make this line thicker. I'm going up, on this side of the E I'm going down. This, I'm going down. 
So you can actually make it look like you've used a proper calligraphy brush. Here, go up. Here, on this little thing, I'm going down. Easy. You can even just do kind of normal uh, font and then use the same uh, rule. So on every downstroke, and what I do is I kind of trace it with my pen and when I go down, I just make it thicker. So these would be thicker. Okay. I mean, I could do fonts all day, but I think people might get bored. Okay, is that enough for now? You've got enough to work with. Okay, um, I'm going to give you maybe a minute uh, just to play around on the page next to it there on page three. Um, play around and actually try some things out. We need some music while we're busy. <laughs> yeah. Can we oh. <laughs> put ads in there? <laughs> Let me see if I can fix my tech quick. Okay, awesome. Has everyone invented a brand new font? You must tell me so I can use it. Okay, I think that's better. Okay, awesome. Okay, so we've done layout, we've done font. The next thing is, and I've lumped it all together, um, but you can have a lot of fun with this. So. I don't know if anyone has seen online, there are people who do like bullet journaling. So they're very neat and they have like planners and things. Okay, so people who bullet journal pretty much use a lot of this. So you can actually do a lot uh, with this. Um, so this is bullets, numbering, connectors, arrows. Um, so bullet points, what they do is kind of separate ideas. As soon as I put a bullet point there, I know that these things are their own standalone point. Um, and you can have a lot of fun with them. So obviously, you know, kind of the main bullet, the sub bullet, which are just circles. Um, what I like to do is almost like an open square. Um, even with teams and that, if I'm taking notes with teams, um, I'll do something like that. And then I know if a task is if a task is done, I can put a tick in there. If a task is cancelled, I can put a cross in there. If it's in progress, I can put a dot. Um, so you can almost create your own language or your own interpretation of these things, uh, especially if you're sharing these with other people or, you know, for yourself. Um, you can do triangles. You can do stars. So all of these things can become a bullet point. What I do often, if I know that there's an issue or a risk, I put like an exclamation point and I put it in a triangle. So I know that that point is an issue or warning. Um, if it's an extra point of information, I put an eye and a circle around it. 
So suddenly bullet points, which we thought was just one thing, could mean a hundred different things. Um, you can also have fun with it. So a cute one is like a circle with three smaller circles, which is like a little animal paw. Um, okay, and then the difference with bulleting and, and numbering is that, and we know this as agilists. Uh, what else? Sugar. So if these things are bulleted, there's kind of no um, hierarchy. It doesn't matter which one you get first. As soon as I number it, okay, bread is more important than milk, than sugar. As soon as I number it, it gives an order of priority. So just be conscious if you're numbering things, it implies that there's an order of priority or there's a sequence in terms of a process or steps that people have to take. Okay, cool. So again, I'd encourage you to kind of uh, play around with that and see how many different types of bullets and things you can create. Okay, the next one is connectors, um, separators, and arrows. Um, so let's say we've got lots of ideas and information. An easy way to kind of separate things very quickly is to use a line to separate them. You can also, and we're going to go into more detail with this and make it a bit more fun, you can also kind of contain it to say this is idea one, this is idea two. A way that you can kind of show direction or show a connection between something is using a line. So if this information relates to this idea, I can actually put a, a line or an arrow. Um, and suddenly now we actually sorting information and sorting ideas in a very quick, quick and easy way. Um, and there are also kind of different psychological meanings to this. So if I do like a thin line versus a thicker line versus a dotted line, what do you think those would mean? What do you think the difference between those would be? Perfect. Did everyone hear that? Okay, so a thicker line can show a strong connection between something, and a thinner line could show a weaker or a subtle connection, and a dotted line could be like an indirect connection. So again, it's interesting how much meaning these things can have, and we often don't really think about it. Um, you can also use lines to highlight information, so you can underline something. Uh, you can use, I mean, you'll see this often in, in my work, these like three little lines which kind of makes it shine, uh, so you can make words kind of stand out just using lines. Okay, so how are you feeling up until now? Easy. Pardon? Interesting, okay, cool. So usually people up until this point are like, cool, I got this, you know, it's, it's manageable. It's all stuff that we use every day. We're now gonna go on to the fun part, uh, pictures and people. So this is sometimes where people get a bit uh, nervous, but I promise, yeah? What's the meaning of the dotted line? The dotted line. Sorry, let's just go back. So dotted line could mean kind of indirect. You know, so often if you have like a dotted line, it could mean uh, also like subtle or indirect. So maybe idea one and two are somehow connected, but not really. Dual reporting. Yes. Exactly. Like an organogram. So we have like a solid line and then a dotted line, which is like 
uh, indirect or sometimes even like informal. Um, so it's amazing actually how many visuals we use every day, you know, like a lot of this is uh, familiar to us. Okay, and this is maybe where it gets a bit more um, exciting, is pictures and people. Okay, so how many of you are confident drawing pictures? Okay, awesome. Okay, that's good. How many of you maybe used to enjoy drawing when you were a child? Yeah, it's amazing. So what happened? <laughs> Life. <laughs> Life happens. I feel like sometimes, somewhere along the line, someone said, oh, that's not artistic or you don't have autistic, you know, so somewhere along the line we got discouraged. Um, and again, this is not art, okay, this is thinking, this is an extension of your thinking. Okay, and this is a really um, cool trick, right? So think of everything in the world as made up of basic shapes. Okay, so we're not trying to make like a super realistic, uh, with like three dimensional, you know, uh, drawing. We're trying to do a very quick representation of something. So um, we use these elements, so a line, a spiral, or like a squiggly line, triangle, square, rectangle, or circle. Okay, and from this you can draw anything. Okay, so for example, like a flip chart, how I draw a flip chart really quickly is just a line, another parallel line, a line across, line across, and a line at the back. Flip chart in one, two, three, four, five lines. Sorry, am I in your way here? Okay, cool. Uh, the squiggly line, super easy. We could do a cloud. Triangle. You could do something like a fish. A square or a rectangle, so you could start with the rectangle, do a line across the top, a line at the bottom, do a little line and a circle, and you've got a cell phone. If you make it square, it's a tablet. That, I mean, you can use all the time. Okay, a circle, um, one I like, but I've realized now with the keynote this morning, I need to learn how to draw energy saver bulbs because I like to do like light bulbs. But this is like the old fashioned one. But I still like it. Okay, so with a circle you can do a light bulb. With a triangle and circles you could do for example, like a triangle, give it three circles, you've got an ice cream. Uh, what I love also, like it's a square and a circle, so when I draw a puzzle piece, I actually draw the corners first. I suppose you could think of it almost as doing like a pencil square. So when you think of it, it's almost like that. So I do the corners first, I go in, out, in, out, or whichever way, and you've got a puzzle piece. What else? A nice game to play also is to kind of look around. And if any of you have um, kids, I don't, but I've got like nieces and nephews and that, it's a fun game to play, to kind of walk around and say, how would I draw that? really simply. What you can do also is, um, if you need inspiration, you can actually Google, so like Google ice cream, but then say icon or clip art. So often the simplest form of something would be like an icon. And basically this is like learning another language. So you're gonna have, you're gonna build on your language in terms of what you can draw. And you can get kind of more 
more fancy, more 3D, or you can keep it simple. Like one of the things I love to do is like a stack of books. So I would just do like this, try and match them up so it's the same on both sides. And then you just join it with a line. Stack of books. Okay, so pretty much like the world is your oyster, but keep thinking simple. As long as it looks like it represents that thing. And often, you know, if you don't love it, or if you feel like it doesn't look like that, just label it. <laughs> and move on. Remember, it's not about perfection, it's not art. So if you're spending 50 minutes trying to make something look super realistic, you could probably move on. Okay, and it's practice. Like when we learned how to read and write, we had to practice. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to just play around with some ideas of objects. I see we've got some budding sketch notes here. And the thing is, in Agile, you know, we have to learn and understand and communicate complex, you know, ideas and complex things. And this can really help to explain things to people or to learn new things. Um, so it is kind of a really cool tool to have when you're working with teams as well, or even just for yourself to kind of um, advance your, your learning as well. Okay, cool, ready to move on. I know, we could just draw all day. Huh? I must get some music going with the ink tool, but I'll put it here. Okay, next thing, and this is very useful, uh, you can kind of stop at objects, but I feel like it limits you. Um, so the next thing is people. So how do we represent people, emotions, faces, etc.? I'm here to tell you that stick people are people too. Stick people are okay. Okay, so at school or whatever, maybe we were told, you know, that's, you need to be more realistic. No, you can use stick people, especially if you're trying to draw quickly. Um, the thing is you can actually do them more interestingly. So if you think of a stick person, you might have a stick man or a stick woman. But you can actually give them a lot more character by using, so there's like a chest person, so you can do a head and like a half circle, give it legs. I do like a little bubble at the bottom for feet. You can even just give it like an arm that's like a bubble. So it helps to kind of give them a bit of substance, give them a bit of body. So you've got like a chess person, you've got a bean person, which are really fun because you don't have to be accurate. You just make like a bean shape, give it legs, give it arms. 
and you've got a person. Uh, you can also do, instead of a bean, you can do a square. Um, it's quite nice to kind of try and give them some movement. So if someone's kind of running, you can make the body go in a different, you know, you want to kind of make that body move. Um, and a nice thing to do also is to just get someone to model for you or use your own body to kind of say, how, which way would my legs go if I was running or if I was jumping? What would it look like? Okay, and then you can also do like a star person uh, where you basically just do the legs and the arms all in one kind of movement. And you'll find your style. You'll find something that that you like that works for you. Either you're gonna like kind of the more square shapes or you're gonna like the, the more organic kind of rounder shapes. <laughs> we don't have time, unfortunately, to get everyone to model and and jump and do poses, but it's definitely something to kind of practice because once you have a few poses down, um, you can actually show a lot of expression and movement through that. Okay, so there's some examples. So it's amazing what you can do with stick people. You don't have to go further. You can, but this is more than enough to kind of communicate different things. It's like a sound of concentration here. I love it. That's Okay, so now that we have people and kind of bodies and movement down, we're gonna talk about expression. So expression is a really cool way to convey emotions. I think also especially in what a lot of us do in software development, it's important to have that human element. Um, so emotions are sometimes a lot more memorable than just objects. Um, so in your books there's this grid, and this is kind of the best way I've found to, to explain this. So you can use three shapes and show a whole range of emotions. Um, so across the top here is the eyebrows, so those would kind of go down, and across the side is the mouth. So here I'm going to go and I'm going to put this mouth across that row. I'm going to put this mouth, this mouth, and then I'm going to put the eyebrows going down. So originally it was this shape, but I've kind of split them, otherwise people have unibrows. So I'm going to put the eyebrows that way, eyebrow, okay, this person does have a unibrow. So a lot of our emotions is actually in our mouths and in our eyebrows. So if you just have eyes and a nose, you're not going to see any emotion. A lot of it is if you're surprised, your eyebrows go up. If you're angry, they go down. So in this grid is pretty much every emotion you'd need to know how to draw. Easy. See, everyone can draw. Some people were saying before the workshop, they said, I'm not going to come because I can't draw. And I was like, everyone can draw. Okay, and then you can have fun with it. So you'll find your own style. So you can do eyes. What I do is I do a circle and then I do a line over it, which makes it maybe look a bit more realistic. And I do like a little line for a nose. Um, eyebrows, I kind of squiggle. 
you know, so you'll find your own style. You could just do dots. You could do like a round nose. So play around with different styles as long as it's quick and it feels like authentic to you. But you can really kind of look around and play with, with different types of, of styles. Again, we're just trying to be as quick as possible to convey what we want to convey. Okay, sorry, I know I'm moving quite quickly, but I will give you time at the end to put it all together into a sketch note. Okay, so it's very easy if you need to draw a suitcase or a fish or a phone because it's a literal object. But what happens if you have to draw something like strategy or communication or management or collaboration? So what we find is often they're kind of like abstract terms. So what you would do in that situation, and again, it's about like building up your vocabulary, building up how you would represent things. So if we take strategy as an example, what I sometimes use for strategy is if I do like a square, a rectangle, a bigger rectangle, bigger rectangle, and then three lines and a star. I've drawn this very close to the one end. You could have like a telescope with a star to show like a north star for strategy. I mean, maybe more simple, you could do, you know now how to draw puzzle pieces. So you could draw maybe puzzle pieces fitting together. and maybe some separate. What else? How would you kind of represent strategy? Magnifying glass? Definitely. So circle, another circle, a line, a rectangle, and then a line like that. I sometimes like to give it like a little shine. Okay, cool. So we're gonna play a game. And I'm gonna play it with you. Okay, so this is called Visual Jam. So I wonder, let me maybe just use a flip chart. Otherwise it's gonna be on the screen. Just put your, I'll just put a. Okay, cool. So I want you on one of your blank pages in your book, even, just make four, four kind of squares, make a grid. I'll just use, I just need one. Oh, shit. <laughs> we can just do that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, cool. I need a timer for this. Okay, so especially this is kind of training you if you want to do more live note taking. Your guys' flip charts are very different to ours. I've done some. Okay, cool. So you're going to make a grid. So 
So we're going to do four words. Okay, so you've got four different spots. Okay, and I'm going to do it with you, and I, um, I'm also, don't know what's going to come up, but I'm just going to turn around so everyone can do their own. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give us 30 seconds and we're going to draw a concept. Okay. Who wants to give us a word? Stopwatch? No. Okay. What's a word that we could draw? Think abstract. What are some of the things that you, you uh, come like into contact with an agile or at work? Pardon? Growth. Awesome. That's a good one. Okay. Is everyone ready? Do you have an idea? Okay. 30 seconds starts. Just one. Yeah. Good question. Okay. So we're drawing growth. Okay. So growth. I'm going to start the timer. Okay, go. Okay. That's kind of how quick you have to be, especially if you're doing live sketch noting. Okay, next word. We're going to do four words. So that's the first one. Transformation. This one's hard, hey? <laughs> but let's do it. Okay, transformation. Okay, time's up. Be kind, be kind to us, next person. Okay, next one. Challenges. Challenges. <laughs> I said be kind. Okay, do we want to do challenges? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Okay, last one. Be kind. Kind. Okay. Let's do it. Okay, how was that? Nice. 
And the thing is, it is hard, right? So to visualize complex things or um, intangible things is hard. But if you can, you'd be surprised how that helps you kind of interpret and remember things. Okay, I'm gonna show you mine. Um, and maybe if you can all kind of hold yours up to your table. It's great to look at how other people's, people did it because you may get ideas. Okay, but that's just my interpretation. Everyone's gonna have different ways of visualizing things. Growth, exactly. So growth, you could have transformation. Transformation is a hard one. So I always do some kind of cocoon and a butterfly or something. Did anyone else have something different for transformation? I'd love to know. Oh, that's cool. Transformation, like a circle, a triangle, a square with arrows. That's easier. I love that. So from like an old school Nokia to a smartphone. Love that. Ice to water. Rigid to fluid. Love that. Okay, so ice to water. You see, so you learn. If you share and you kind of chat with other people, you'll actually find uh, different ways of representing things. So it helps to, although it can be scary, it helps to share your work and brainstorm with other people as well. Awesome, well done, I'm very impressed. Okay. Cool, and that's kind of the hardest, the hardest thing is to draw live. Uh, but it is fun because you can't spend 10 hours on it. So it is fun because it forces you to keep it simple and to be quick. Okay, awesome. Okay, frames. Okay, so we're on number five, we're almost done, and then you guys are gonna do your own sketch note. Okay, so frames you can have a lot of fun with, or you can do it really simply. Um, so imagine now you've got your sketch note, you've done your title, you've done kind of your other text, you've added some pictures, you've added some people. Now what you'll do is you'll start to actually contain it. Um, so you can use, so the trick is here to do the text first, because if you don't, if you do a container first, you might run out of space. So it's like really frustrating if you do that and then you like, conversation, conversation, and then around about there, you realize that you definitely don't have enough space and then it's like something like that, okay. So you always wanna kind of do your text first and then contain it afterwards. So you can go really simple like a square block. Uh, you could do kind of like a rounded block. What I like to do is if it's like a quote or um, something someone said, uh, then you can do some kind of speech bubble, which is essentially just a triangle with either a square or a kind of rounded block. So speech bubbles are great. Also what's good because it doesn't have to be perfect is like a thought bubble. So when I take notes for myself and I have an idea or a thought but it's not coming from that person, I'll kind of put in a little thought bubble, you know, so that I know everything in thought bubbles is like an idea or something I've thought about. Um, and then you can actually just have like a lot of fun with it. So to do like a sticky note, you would do a square, but then before you close that last corner, you do a triangle inward, and then you join those two. So it makes it look like the corners folded up. Okay, and then you can also do like fancy frames, for example, like a box, and then what I do is do like a little half circle in the corners, and then a half circle midway, um, on the length, and then I just join them with like a little curved line. And that makes it look like, almost like a picture frame. And then I add like a little nail in the wall and a line. 
If you're sketchnoting and you don't have space around your text to, to close it, that's fine. So say, for example, you've got like a heading and then you've added a really cool picture next to it so that you remember, like here's an envelope, so you remember kind of what that is relating to the text. Um, if you need to contain it and now I don't have space ready, it's going to get messy to try and go around the text like that. What you can do is actually contain the text, but let the picture break that container. And then the trick is to leave a gap between the container and the picture. So what that does is it actually gives an illusion that the container is behind that picture. It makes it almost look kind of 3D. Okay, and then there are also a whole bunch of flags which are really fun. So flags, my favorite one, you do almost like a backwards S, a forwards S. I'm just going to make this a bit longer. You do a line, so you can imagine your text would be here. You do a line, obviously thick enough for your text. And then you do a line, the width of your top line. And then you want to just check kind of the gap here must match the gap here. So if you can imagine, it must try be the same width when you draw it. So then I'm going to draw down and I'm going to leave it, leave a bit of a gap underneath and then just join it all. And I've got a flag. A simpler version of that would be like a rectangle and then behind it two squares and then you just join the back and the front corners like that. Okay, we're on to our final section because I want to give you time to also sketch note. Um, and here's the thing, right? Here's a prime example is we always kind of run out of time. So if you run out of time, your color and your shading is what you do last because it doesn't really change the meaning, it just makes it look cooler. So that can kind of be something that you play with right at the end. Um, so with, with shading, uh, a funny thing is, I don't know in India, but like in South Africa, I always picture the light source coming from the top right, which means the shadows would be on the opposite edge. Americans, I don't know why. Are there any Americans? <laughs> I must do like a survey. Uh, do the opposite. So if I look at like American sketch notes, the shadows are all the opposite way. It doesn't matter. Just be consistent. So if you picture like an imaginary sun, anything opposite that's going to be in shadow. So um, for example, if you have a block like this, your shadow is going to be on this side of that block. And then also don't go right to the end. It gives an illusion of making it like 3D. So I'm not going to go right to the end of that block. I'm going to give it, leave a little gap. And then it also makes it look like it's 3D. You can also pretend like the, the light source is coming from above, in which case all your shadows would kind of be over it, I mean under it. So it looks like it's hovering. And all you do is you take a light gray marker and you just go over your sketch note and just kind of on the left side of everything just add shadows. And it really does make a difference. It makes it look um, a lot more kind of 3D. Okay, and then lastly is color. So try to use one color. So you can do a lot with just one color or two colors. If you're using 10, it's going to be a lot of time and effort, and sometimes it doesn't add more value. Okay, so um, what you can do is you can use similar colors. So you can use kind of shades of blue, shades of green, yellows and oranges, or you can use opposite colors, which are called com complementary if you want it to be bright and there to be a big contrast. So that would be like purple and yellow are complementary. 
blue and kind of orange, so it's actually that way, pink and green. Okay, so we've got markers for you guys to play with, so we're going to hand out some markers, and there's also a four paper on the table. Um, so if you guys have tablets and that, you can play around with virtual sketch noting or uh, digital, but to be honest, it's really great to start with pen and paper because there's no kind of learning curve from a tech perspective. Um, so today we're going to do pen and paper. There are pencils around, so if you want to start with your layout and do light kind of pencils to lay it out, then you can. What I've also done is I've printed out um, the Agile Manifesto. So there's the four values and the 12 principles. Um, so I thought that could be really nice inspiration if you want to do like a sketch note on the Agile values. Otherwise, you could sketch note about anything. You could do a sketch note on this workshop if you wanted to. So you can pick your topic. Um, Okay, and then I think we should play some music, and I'll walk around, so if you have any questions or anything, then, then I'll be around. Okay, I'm just going to... I won't be around there. Okay, so, thank you. Okay, so these markers, I've got a thick end and a thin end. Um, please don't take them, because I've got a workshop on Saturday, and we need them again. <laughs> Um, but we're going to be using the thinner end for this. On Saturday for the posters, we're going to use the bigger ones. some of my cooking photos there on my iPad. Okay, so 
we've got four minutes left. Um, I've kind of been walking around. There have been a few questions. If there's time, I want to spend a minute or two maybe showing you the digital version of this and the tools that I use. Um, so let's maybe do that quick. I, for this presentation, it was actually an experiment. It was my first time plugging my iPad in and drawing on slides. So I used Keynote because uh, I've got an iPad, but I'm sure that uh, PowerPoint would also have like a pen tool that you could draw on. Um, so what I can also do is I'll clean up these slides, I'll delete the blank ones, and I'll upload them on the conference site. So you have it. Um, but basically with this, I could pick with the Apple Pencil, as soon as I start drawing, it brings up like a pen tool. And then I could pick, there's even one that I think converts, no, it's not gonna work now because the demo guards. Um, there's one that converts, if you write, it actually converts it to text. Um, so this is Keynote, it's Apple, Apple's not for everyone. Um, so I have an a, a iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil. What I like is that I can lean on the iPad and draw. So for me it's got a very much like a pen and paper feel to it. So I think whatever setup you get, just make sure your stylus, um, this is Bluetooth, so just make sure you don't have to keep your hand off the thing to draw, because that makes it a lot harder. Um, but I think nowadays you can get Android and stuff that does the same. Um, when I do other things, I use an app called uh, Procreate. The reason I got an iPad was because Procreate was only available on Apple. I think it still is but there are hundreds of other drawing apps that you can use. Um, I like Procreate because I'm quick on it. So the only thing with digital drawing is there's a learning curve uh, in terms of just getting quick on the, on the tech. Uh, so this was a, a um, sketch note I did of um, Anita's talk this morning. Um, but it took me, oh, thanks. <laughs> it took me a year or two to get very quick, and I use a lot of gestures. They're like double tap to undo, triple tap to redo. You're working with layers, you're working. So digital can be awesome because it's editable, you can move stuff around, but there is also a bit of a learning curve uh, just to get quick on it. Um, the nice thing about Procreate is that it also records in the background a time-lapse video. So what I often do is just export it out. It's almost like a byproduct of the sketch. Uh, but sometimes animation can take days to do. So this for me I love because it actually, um, you know, it's just like a byproduct of the sketch. It's got all my mistakes and it's very linear. So it's really limited as like a video but it's quite fun uh, to share. So it's already on Twitter um, as well, if you guys want to see. So that's what I use. If I'm drawing in vector, I use Fresco, which is Adobe. It's an Adobe product, because then I can draw straight into vector SVG, you know, and pull it, it's a bit more editable. Okay, any questions? Sketching SM, so if I do take sketch notes, this conference, I will post them uh, under that name so you can follow me. And then if you take sketch notes, you can tag me. I'd love to see. Okay, awesome. Thank you.